Welcome back. Our latest episode of the All Indiana Politics podcast with Phil Sanchez Unfiltered is out. The goal of this podcast is to give voters a look at the candidates in big political races. For tonight's Unfiltered, we have highlights from my conversation with Senator Mike Braun. He explains why he'll focus on Hoosier jobs and education if elected governor. Hoosiers jobs and economic growth. That's number one. Yep. Why is that so important to you? It's the same reason it's uh, most important at the national level. And I think the uh, election of 2024 nationally is going to be because we had the best peace and prosperity and economy that I can remember. And I was in it 37 years prior to becoming a senator uh, under the Trump administration. And you get so many events that come along like COVID that would derail probably whoever was there when it occurred. But when you look now at the stark comparison of a sugar high economy, we were 18 trillion in debt when I got there five years ago, now 33 Interest rates have gone up 5%. Inflation, we didn't have any of that. That trickles down into your states. We are, thank goodness, a state that's got a good business environment. I've been a part of it. The reason I moved back, my wife has had her only job as her business in our downtown for 45 years. Uh, jobs in the economy, always number one. It's a great issue to run on. If you're an incumbent and things are going well, mm -hmm. it generally rules the roost when things aren't going well. Governor Eric Holcomb says things are going well. In our own state, you can make a case that we have gotten through it better than many, but we still have issues of very high health care costs. We have high infant mortality and maternal mortality rates. Uh, we're still not for our economy, producing kids with life skills or even reading abilities that are any better on reading 10 years ago. Life skills, are we preparing our kids for the jobs that are high demand, high wage? I think we can do better. I've lived through all that. That's why jobs in the economy, number one, and I feel so good about the collective experience I've had to take us to that next level. I mean, that takes me to my next uh, point here, or your, your next issue, which is improving education and putting kids first. Yes. W w where do you stand on that, and, and why is that so important to you? Well, number one, I can tell you uh, the microphone you've got is being a U.S. senator. I'll never forget when I got to uh, interview the Secretary of Education, Cardona. And it was when school boards were getting a little rowdy. In fact, he had just been to Indiana. And he said the board uh, meetings there have been a little rowdy. He made it political because your guy didn't win. Um, I asked him if he wanted to kind of retract that statement. No, that's how political things get even at that level when education should be the bailiwick of state governments. Then I had a simple question for him. Who should be the most important stakeholder? in our own kids' education. He listed everything, everyone other than parents. Mm. Uh, I think that parents uh, should be the most important stakeholder in their own kids' education. A governor got elected in a very blue state, Yunkin, on that very theme. We gotta make sure that for all the money we spend through state government, 11 billion a year, half of our total budget on K through 12, have life skills that are going to pre prepare you for future employment, enlistment, or enrollment into higher education. Based upon high demand, high wage jobs, your educational system with primary input from parents in terms of what they have as their own best interest for their kids have to be merged in to how we've done it in the past. Um. We could, you and I could probably talk about that forever because I'm a, I'm a parent to two young kids, 12 and 9. So something else that came up in the text that I read was uh, when it comes to, um, hold on here, uh, genders and biological males should yep. not be allowed to play, compete in girls' sports. Uh, where do you stand on that? Obviously, uh, we know where you stand, but why is that uh, top of your mind? Well, I'd have to... Uh quote Rand Paul's statement, what yeah. planet do you need to be from? I mean, I acknowledge all the issues that are complicated when it comes to the uh, social spectrum of issues. But uh, I think on that particular one, uh, it polls 98% among Republicans. Uh, it's in the high 70s among independents, and it's in the 60s among Democrats that biological males should not be competing with biological females. And uh, there was a law that passed in this state 
uh, you know, that was vetoed. Mm-hmm. And that was by a supermajority legislature that reflected that feeling among Hoosiers. I'm one that on any of those issues, I don't, I think the big issue in our country is when you come from a position of moral superiority, that's no good. You end up demonizing who you disagree with. And to get through these, you cannot do that. You got to listen to what others say, make the right decision, do not demonize along the way. And you can listen to the full conversation on the All Indiana Podcast Network. Just scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you to our website, wishtv.com.